Hey, everybody, it's the coach. You're tuned in to Sunday Night Football on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a great one on tap between the Tennessee Titans and the Dallas Cowboys. So with that, let's head over to the heart of Texas, massive AT&T Stadium in Arlington. On the call, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We are sandwiched between Fort Worth and Dallas, Texas in Arlington at the luxurious AT&T Stadium. A moment ago, here was the scene with the Cowboys emerging from their tunnel. It was loud. It's still loud. We're ready for football as the Cowboys get set to match up with the Tennessee Titans. And hi again, everybody. Alongside my partner, Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. We see Dak Prescott bringing this Dallas Cowboys offense onto the field that really struggled in Carolina. In fact, they didn't have a play in Carolina territory the entire first half, and Prescott finished with 170 yards. They were fairly empty yards, to be frank. Yeah, so there's got to be some concern in Dallas because if you go back now, in his last nine games, seven times he hasn't hit 200 yards throwing the football. So part of it is they can't establish a run with Ezekiel Elliott. The other part is is the receiving core up to the challenge, but what's being missed, they're missing a couple of key starters on the offensive line. He got harassed the entire game against Carolina. Now a play fake here on first down. Drops it underneath to Elliott. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. It's a gain of seven, and it's a second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, ball may come your way. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Here's the first carry for Ezekiel Elliott. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It goes as a loss of six. And now third down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. Now that tight end position, it just seems to continue to evolve every year in the NFL. Yeah, you're getting really terrific athletes. A lot of them maybe were wide receivers at one point. They continue to give you speed, great hands, and big bodies, which make them excellent targets for quarterbacks. A first down carry by Elliott. And very little running room there. He did get a couple up to the 49. Elliott in week one that lost to Carolina. He had 15 carries, 69 yards. He did have a score as well. The Cowboys offensive line, tight ends, they have to spend a lot of time in practice now working against loaded boxes. All right, I'm not just talking about seven. I may not even be talking about eight. I'm talking about maybe nine that'll be in that box until the Cowboys show they can hurt people downfield throwing the football. He's going to have to not just get what's blocked in terms of yardage. He's going to have to create his own yardage with his runs. A second down throw for Prescott. And Beasley with it over the middle. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. A Dallas first down. Prescott hook it up with Beasley. 
Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Prescott from the gun. He hits Beasley right side. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. So not much to speak of scoring-wise in this first quarter of play. Can't wait to see what the second quarter has in store. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Sitting alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon as it is Cowboy football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. to Elliott. Here's Prescott. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Seems like this defense, especially the secondary, has really been contesting about every throw in this first half. Remind me of a good half-court defensive basketball team. Every time a pass is thrown, they're right there in good, good defensive position, able to affect the play. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. The give is to Elliott. And able to push his way forward here for a good little gain. The tackle is made by Adoree Jackson. That second down play call was not to pick up the first down. It was to accomplish what they did to get him into a manageable third down because they had incompletion on first down, so they were behind the sticks, so to speak. They needed to make up some ground, and they did. Prescott from the gun on third. And incomplete. The contact made the ball run free and brings up fourth down. That's already the third time they've looked his way on this opening drive. He's caught one of the three. That doesn't mean they won't continue to go in that direction. It feels like they think they've got something good going there, and they think those numbers are going to increase. And this one is right through. And the Cowboys are going to jump out to a 3-0 lead. So our initial drive of the night ends in three points. Maybe not exactly what this home crowd wanted, but they'll take the early lead. They will take it. You're exactly right. Everybody wants a touchdown. But in this case, good opening drive, put points on the board. And a lot of coaches do believe the first team to score in the game, statistically, often ends up the winner. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. Tennessee's offense trots out for the first time coming off a 27-20 loss to Miami in week one. And the Titans QB situation a little bit up in the air. Marcus Mariota forced from the week one loss with an elbow injury. So Blaine Gabbert next man up. Yeah, it was only 11 of 22 with an interception. And now, even though it's early, next week's game against Houston, a divisional game, takes on added importance. Remember, they lost to Laney Walker as well. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 right at the 30. Hey, 
Deion Lewis, the first carry for the ex-Patriot. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We're back to Arlington right after this timeout. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll take you to Orlando and Jonathan Coachman. Coach will have highlights and analysis of this first half, one that's featured no touchdowns as of yet on either side. So his job's a little bit easier for this halftime need to give the, Need to give the coach some highlights here. Yes, we do. Now a second down throw for Mariota. And they get to Mariota here as he's dropped on the sack. And now a timeout called by the Cowboys defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. Mariota will need a big play after the sack as the Titans come up third and long. Here's Mariota, option left. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. And now the Cowboys are going to call another timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. Back deep is Tavon Austin. This is taken at the 18. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. The offense for the Cowboys now working their way back onto the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, Touchdowns. First down, Prescott. Escaping the pressure right. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. Nice job there defensively. A great time to dial up a blitz. And give him credit under center instead of throwing it away. Actually a pretty good job of getting past the line of scrimmage, not losing yardage. Prescott now on second down. Wide open receiver complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Scott looks to throw on first. He'll let it fly for Austin. 
And this is going to be intercepted. Picked by Kevin Byard. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with during a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. I want to get back to something that you touched on earlier when Tennessee first came on the field for their opening series, that Delaney Walker is gone, fractured ankle, missing the rest of the season. That is a tough blow for the Titans. It really is because he is the primary target for quarterback Marcus Mariota, and teams have to adjust their coverage towards Delaney Walker. He's been the Titans' leading receiver the last four seasons. He's a Pro Bowl MVP back in January. So that means John U. Smith from Florida International University in his second season takes over as the primary tight end. And I think wide receiver Corey Davis has to step up and make a lot more catches. They'll start things on first down with Deion Lewis. And not a whole lot to speak of there as they'll bring him down shy of the 20. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. So we have come to halftime here in Dallas with the Cowboys out in front. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports halftime report. This one's been all about the defense. Just a lone field goal in that first half. And as a result, not too much available in terms of highlights. But that's okay. We've got a full half to go. And to bring it your way, let's get back out to Brandon and Charles. These offenses seemingly still back at the hotel for the first half. 3-0 our score as the second half gets underway. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And the Titans getting set to go. They're down here, but very much in this game. What's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. Mariota now to throw on first down. Looking middle. It's incomplete. He was trying to get it to Taewon Taylor, and that'll bring up second down. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback, but when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. Dumps it off to Lewis. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. On third down, Mariota and Matthews over the middle with a grab. And he'll be brought down right at the 30 here. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. 
the slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Here's Brett Kern now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. And that one came close to hitting the big scoreboard up there as the fair catch is made inside the 20-yard line. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. They were able to get the ball back here, didn't surrender any points. Now they'll look to add to that lead. And how about the boost the defense gave them? Going right out on the field, shutting them down, not giving up any points, and turning the ball back over. They want to do their part now and show them a little respect and some gratitude <laughs> by scoring some points. And to get a little more cushion. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 15. They'll start the drive with Elliott. Oh, what a move. And he'll take this one up over the 20 to the 21-yard line. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. On second down, Elliott. And he's able to get up here to the 26. Five yards is the pickup there as that extends this drive. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from the lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Give to Elliott. He finds some open field here. He finds an opening past the 40. He's at the 40. The 20. 10. 5. Touchdown. Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott. 74 yards. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. They blitzed defensively there, but he was able to slip through that first layer, and then he was gone. I think they won the leverage game, didn't they? Yes. Right? They saw the blitz coming. That got to him a little bit, but they leveraged it perfectly and found not just a crease, a gigantic hole. And off he goes, and he's still going all the way to the end zone. Extra point forthcoming. Extra point right down the middle. And the lead grows to 10 0. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it culminates in a touchdown run by Ezekiel Elliott. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get sent to take the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Mariota and the Titans break the huddle first and 10 at their 25-yard line. They go play action. Mariota. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Randy Gregory in there to get him for his second sack of the night. 
And that's the second sack of the game, but this player, disruptive in all phases, whether he's going upfield, coming underneath, you name it. He's a big time guy you have to block. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. This is Lewis, and he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. They get two yards back, but they're going to need a lot more than that here on third down. One quarter remains here on a Sunday night. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now in Arlington. It's Titan football here as they trail to begin the fourth quarter. And on third down, the Cowboys bring in an extra defensive back. From the gun, Mariota going underneath for Lewis. They'll give him a yard on the play, and that's going to make it fourth down. And right now, defensively, you love that, don't you? I mean, you'll give them that play. And they'll take it every single time. This is almost like nickeling and diming it downfield, and too much time is going to run off the clock. So fourth and 15, but the offense is staying out there to go for it. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. And no, it's incomplete. The Titans try it, but ultimately they fail on fourth down. And now possession's going to go over with a football at the 20-yard line. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now really hoping for a turnover. Here's Elliott, and he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. Rashawn Evans out of Alabama had the tackle defensively. Able to stay in bounds, so the clock keeps rolling. This defense right now backed up in the red zone. Another touchdown, it's over. They've got to stand tall quickly. Been in this spot before. Now there's a little bit of desperation creeping in, and all you're doing when you're talking to your defensive teammates is first guy there, hold him up. Second, third guy in, rake it the football. Get it out. We've got to create a turnover because one more score, and this game's over. And they're going to take it all the way down and just take the delay. Delay of game, offense. Play clock hit zero. Don't know what went wrong there, Charles, but it's going to cost Still some them five in. yards. Has to be some organization from the sideline. Sometimes when you're trying to decide on what play to send in, the play caller has to move a little bit faster. After the penalty, it's Elliott. And he'll get a couple here down to the 22. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this.
So the Cowboys in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away. Give to Elliott running left. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. And his kick is indeed good. And that'll push the lead up to 13 to nothing. So they settle for just the three. But clearly right now, anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off. But it's still eight up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. And his guys are going to start their drive right at the 20-yard line. The Titans offense now, they get set to head back out here. And on that last drive, went for it on fourth, turned it over. But good job by their defense, though. They held them to three, but this offense, they've got to be a little bit better, a little bit more careful here. And sometimes when you see these calls on fourth down, when they decide to go for it, it's not necessarily the coach saying, I believe in my offense. Sometimes the coach saying, I believe in my defense. I can afford to go for it here, because if we don't get it, I don't think we'll give up more than three. And that's exactly what you happened there. You think that factored in? I do. I think that he had that in his mind going into the game, that I'm going to be aggressive on offense because I know I've got a defense that can hold up their end. Mariota now. Complete. Smith has it. So he got free of one tackle but couldn't do a whole lot else. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Second down, Mariota. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. The Titans on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 8. Working out of the gun, Mariota. And this is going to be incomplete. Anthony Brown right there to knock it away. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores. They have to try and make something good happen. Well, the offense failed earlier on the previous crack at this, but they're going again on fourth down. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And that is incomplete. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And Dallas, they'll take over in terrific field position. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. down to none? Yes, exactly right. Now 
Dallas gets set to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that. <laughs> they weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive down with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. Tenth carry now for Elliott. And able to fight forward inside the 15 to the 13. Now another timeout here called by the Titans as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. They go to Elliott again. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Three red zone trips have yielded just two field goals for them to this point, so they'll be searching for something more on second and goal here. The Cowboys on their way to victory as they take a knee. One man in the backfield, that's Elliott on second and goal. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. Brandon, I can just tell you from experience, there's nothing like pitching a shutout on defense, but even more so when it's a tight game. I mean, when every defensive play is crucial and you don't give up any points, boy, they're going to feel awfully good about themselves after this one. Yeah, exactly. The offense wasn't humming, but hey, all they needed was, uh, you can't score one point. All they needed was two points. Well, you can't score two points on offense. All they needed was at least three. They got what they needed. They got what they needed. Exactly right. The storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is. What an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team, there's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column too. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. It's a win for the Cowboys as we sign off and say so long 